guys um so we got a video to react to um it's gonna be a reaction so i'm not gonna go too deep in it but i want to make sure at least we get the uh, most important part done so let's just get right into it right now That's why I left Michigan, by the way. You left Michigan because of the predestination up there? And... No, because of your story earlier. Oh. Um, I just have a question. What's your I... name, by the way? Jane. Hey, Jane. I don't know if you can answer this or not, but like the friend from Michigan that you talked about who was a Christian and then became atheist, uh -huh. or some of the non -Christ... the Christians who used to believe and now have gone a different path, mm -hmm. are they then once saved, always saved, or... I think if they were truly saved, Jesus says in John chapter 5, he who believes has passed from death into life. In other words, you get eternal life not when you die, you get it when you believe. And if by definition, life is eternal, you can't lose it. You can't lose your justification, you can lose your sanctification. What is justification? Justification is instantaneous. Once you trust in Christ... Your sins are forgiven. Sanctification is an ongoing process where hopefully you're getting closer and closer to becoming like Jesus. Okay? And to illustrate this, justification is like, it took one day to get Israel out of Egypt. But sanctification is, it took 40 years to get Egypt out of Israel. So justification is instantaneous. Sanctification goes up and down. You can lose your, fel your fellowship with, with Christ and still be saved. It could be, though, that if somebody says they've fallen away and they've denied Christ, that maybe they never tasted the gift spoken about in Hebrews. They never really were a Christian. They just said they were and they weren't. You don't know. Only God knows. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. So, um, man. Um, now... Again, I'm pretty sure he's believed what you just said, but there's so much um, not truth in it that I have to go into it. So let me start. Um, hopefully, I'm going to get everything working perfectly this time. Uh, I guess not. Uh, actually, yes. There we go. Okay. So, do you guys remember when he mentioned that Jesus said, Jesus said that um, if you believe in him, you have passed, you have passed from death to life, right? Now, that by itself is true. But the question is, What was the context into which Jesus said those words? So, if we just take the words, whatever he said by itself, it is true. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you have passed from death to life. 100% true. But what was the actual context into what Jesus said about that area? That's why he failed at it because that can be deceiving. Let me actually tell you. So, John chapter 5, right? He mentioned John chapter 5. He's talking about life and judgment all through the sun. Life and judgment all through the sun. When will Jesus Christ judge the world? It's not now. Because in John chapter 3 verse 15, Jesus said, the Son has not come to judge the world, but by through Him, the world will be saved. Actually, let me actually read that for you guys. John chapter 3. You see? And verse number 15, 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent, even so the Son of Man shall be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have the in life, for God so loved the world, we know that verse very, very much. And verse 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's John chapter 3. John chapter 5 is a different context where he's talking about life and judgment all through the Son. Let's talk about that. 
Verse 24, he said, Jesus says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. What was the context of that? It was in the context of what? It's not once saved, always saved. Because next verse says, verse 25, Most assuredly I say to you that the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Basically, and for as the Father has given life and to in himself, he has granted the Son. So, funny, the verse that he quoted has nothing to do with the question she asked. This is what many pastors preach out of false, that one save, always save deception. I'm not saying he's deceiving, because he might not know certain things. But what he said is not true. Biblically speaking, let me tell you why. Um, I think he mentioned you can lose your sanctification, but you cannot lose your justification. Let me make sure that part is correct. Let me go back and let me do that again. Uh, real quick. Let's see. I want to make sure I get that part right. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think if they were truly saved, Jesus says in John chapter 5, he who believes has passed from death into life. Let me tell you something right here, guys. The idea of, oh, I think if they were truly saved, there is no such thing as truly saved. Um, that's why there will be so many people that will be surprised when they are not in heaven because they believe that, oh, I was baptized, I was saved. How am I in hell, not in heaven? Now, are you, going, are you going to tell them because they are not truly saved? That's a lie. What the Bible does teach, actually, you know what? Let me actually go back to that part again so I get everything right. In other words, you get eternal life not when you die. You get it when you believe. And if, by definition, life is eternal, you can't lose it. You can't lose your justification. You can't lose your sanctification. Okay. Um, first thing first, guys. Yes, you can lose both your justification and sanctification. I think he said you can lose your sanctification and not your justification. Yes, you can lose both of them. Let me explain. Um, justification is, according to the message of the sanctuary, it's repentance. You could repent today and go back to sin. Are you still justified? You see, justification happens when in the sanctuary message, it happens in the courtyard. You enter the courtyard, and there's the altar of sacrifice, and then next the bronze laver. The altar of sacrifice is, in a Christian life, it's repentance. The bronze laver symbolizes baptism. Basically, when you repent, it's not when you are baptized that you, you've been so-called saved in the sense of being justified. When you are justified is when you repent of your sins. So I could have been, I could have repented today and then a year later be baptized. That doesn't mean that's when I'm justified. I am justified at the moment I repented of my sin. God removed my sin as if I had never sinned before. But if I go back to doing what is evil, am I still justified? Nowhere in the Bible it teaches that. Now, he talked about the Israelites, right? Now, of course, sanctification is a lifetime work. Okay? Now, let's talk about the Israelites. Because this is very interesting that he mentioned the Israelites. Because we're going to look at something. I want you to understand. You are saved. 
Not when you accepted Jesus Christ, as the Bible teaches, you are saved when Jesus comes again. Or when you die. You either saved or you are lost. Let me tell you why. When you when you accept Jesus Christ by faith, you have entered the path to salvation. And that's why so many people believe that once saved, always saved propaganda that the devil has put into the church. When Jesus said, broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are many that walk in their heart, it's because many of them think they are walking on the path to salvation, but they are walking the path of destruction. Yes, guys, think about it. You cannot be saved while you are alive because you can always sin. But once you sin, do you get back up again or do you stay in your sin? Jesus it did not come to save anybody in their sin. He came to save us from sin. So if you, are keep, if you keep sinning, you can be saved. Now, I'm going to have to make a part two on that because I don't want to make this video too long. So let's talk about the Israelites real quick. Israelites. Uh, let's see. Moses, God took the Israelites out of Egypt, right? And it was supposed to be like an 11 day walk to Canaan. Throughout the whole journey, they kept repenting and going back to doing evil. Repenting back to evil. Repenting back to evil. And that was throughout the whole time until they got to the mouth of Canaan. Look at this part. Verse number, okay, I'm going to try to read that part real quick. Verse number one. So all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried and wept that night. And these Israelites complained against, against Moses and Aaron. Okay. You see, the thought of this, the thought of this, Israel refused to enter Canaan. Now, if you go back to verse number 13. Spies sent into Canaan. So God sent spies to Canaan. And then what happened? So when 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 that when they went into Canaan in verse 26 to verse number 29, the 10 people out of the 12 came back and gave bad report, saying verse number 20, 26, 27, they told him, um, we went to the land where you we sent us a truly flowed with milk and honey, but this is the fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell the there they are strong and they are fortified. They have fortified cities, they are giants, and we were like basically little grasshoppers. 30. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession for all, for we are well above able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go against the people, for they are stronger than we. And because of that, of their unbelief, check out that, chapter 14. Joshua, verse number 6, Joshua and, and Caleb, who were among those who had spattered the land, tore their clothes. Uh, I hope you guys are reading the whole chapter. But I'm not going to bring everything. I'm not going to read everything. And they said what? The land we pass through to spy out is exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, right, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Do not rebel. What again? Do not rebel against the Lord. No fear the people. But what happened? The congregation wanted to kill them. What did God say then? God said what about those people? God says, verse 26, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complain against me? I have heard the complaints which the Israelites made against me. What did he say? As, as I live, 
just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in the wilderness. All of you who were numbered according to your entire number from 12, 20 years old and above, except Caleb and Joshua. Question. They were saved, right? From Egypt. But the ultimate salvation was to enter the land of Canaan. Were they saved? No. So, God does not reward anybody who starts the process. God rewards those who end the process. So, if you started right and you ended wrong, guess what? And you didn't repent, there's no salvation for you. If you started wrong and ended right, you are saved. Israelites, they started right when they got to Canaan and that was their final test to trust God and to not sin against God. What did they do? They sinned. Did you guys know the first people not to enter heaven are going to be unbelievers? It's not the murderers and the thieves. Unbelievers. So, to say that, oh, if they were, if they are, if they are not saved, that means they never tasted. That is not true. There are many people that are going to be in hell that have tasted God's goodness, but decided to turn their back on God. Once you have been baptized, you are not saved. You are, and you have entered the path to salvation right when you repent. That is what the Bible teaches. Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop it right there because I don't make it too long. I'm going to do a part two to give you guys more case studies on that. And if you have any questions, please, you can post it on the description down below, and I'll try my best to answer for you guys. Anyway, again, it was the Open Veil TV. I will see you again.